Chevy Vortec V8 GMT 800 trucks intake manifold sensors. Here's every single one. What they do, how to fix them, how they work, you know, tips and tricks. Let's check it out, guys. All right, so we got the formerly abandoned Chevy Avalanche, and we got that 2006 Chevy Silverado Cat Eye. So the intake manifolds on these trucks are pretty much the same thing with slight differences here and there. So the regular gasoline intakes are the same on all these trucks, but the flex fuel one is different. You can't just swap them between the trucks because they're plastic and the flex fuel one has bigger holes on it in some spots for like the injectors. So you can't just swap them back and forth. If you got a gasoline engine, got to use the gasoline one. If you got a flex fuel truck, you got to use the flex fuel intake. So the 2002 is a 5.3 Vortec V8 and the 2006 is a 4.8 V8. All right, so on these trucks, I only use Delphi, GM Genuine, or AC Delco parts for the sensors. I don't get aftermarket sensors. They don't work well on these GMT 800 trucks. All right, first up right here, we have the mass airflow sensor. It goes for the air box right here. Uh, you can see right there. All right, so here's an old mass airflow sensor off of this truck. So these get dirty, they stop reading right. This meters the amount of airflow in grams that flow past it, tells the computer, look, this much air is going past, mix this much fuel in to make the engine run right. If this thing's dirty, computer doesn't know how much fuel to add to the air mixture, won't run right. So you gotta clean it sometimes. Sometimes you gotta replace them, but normally you can just clean them. All right, so here's the sensor right here, and that's just a honeycomb right there. That's not the actual sensor. The actual sensor is in here. So we have a sensor down in there, right up there, and right there. Those little things going across are the sensors. Then right there, that's a temperature sensor. Computer uses that to read the air temperature that's passing through the air filter. All right, so if we take a look up top right here, you'll see the mass airflow sensor data right here. So this is measured in grams per second. Right here we have the desired idle air control valve right here. Airflow on this is a 2002, so it's got that idle air control valve. But we want to take a look. The mass airflow, when I press on the gas, you can see the airflow increases. And so the measurement increases. When I let go of the gas pedal, it drops right back down to idle. So if we're driving, um, I've seen this, you know, it goes up to like 50 grams per second, 70 grams per second, stays there. You know, um, if you're trying to diagnose this, I'm gonna let go of the pedal again, drops back down. So if you're trying to diagnose this and you see this isn't reading right at all, you know, it's staying like at four when you're driving, you know, going down the highway or whatever, testing it, it should be like 50, 60, 70. If it's not reading right, right here, you'll know it's not reading the proper amount of air flowing over the mass airflow sensor, flowing through it. Can't get the right air fuel ratio because it doesn't know how much fuel to put into the cylinders because this isn't reading right. So you can see if I really tap the gas pedal, just see how fast, see how high it goes up. That can be tricky to diagnose. Um, you know, normally if you just get the code, you swap it out and you're good. All right, so for my diagnostic purposes, I've watched the mass airflow sensor on these trucks with an oscilloscope, and I've checked them out to see how they work. And basically, the electronic systems on these trucks are pretty noisy. They're not like you'd think they'd be. Um, they're pretty noisy, and the sensors are pretty simple once you figure out how they work. Basically, they just meter the air, and then they relay it back to the computer. Computer checks a couple things and says, okay, sensor's good. Oops, okay, sensor's bad. And if it fails enough of these checks, it's gonna throw a code for the mass airflow sensor or whichever sensor, you gotta replace it. All right, so now we got that covered. Moving on up here, we have some sensors up here. Let's take a look at those. All right, so now we're under the hood right here. We have the idle air control valve. All right, so here's the idle air control valve right here. All this is is a motor in here and it's got a plunger. And what happens is um, the computer goes, oh, we need more air to idle, pushes the plunger in, lets more air flow. Up, oh, we need less air, pushes the plunger out, seals up, and it gets less air flow to the engine. So these go bad, they get carboned up. Uh, these are not cheap to buy new ones. You gotta clean them out. I've cleaned them out with rubbing alcohol solvent, got the carbon out of there and they seem to still work properly. Right there, 
just pops down in there. You can see it seals up. There's a hole in here, seals it up, or pulls it this way or this way, depending on how much airflow it wants to get into the engine. All right, so here's the idle air control valve. This is like a little stepper motor. It reads and counts. So when we press on the pedal, you can see it jumps up really fast and pulls that plunger out. Let go of the pedal, starts moving the plunger back in until it reaches where it wants to be at idle. So it has a desired IAC position. That's where the plunger is positioned. Um, you know, while you're driving, it's gonna move. It's gonna try to catch up, put it exactly where it wants. Then right here we have the desired IAC airflow. That's the idle air control valve airflow. It's telling you right here, let's adjust these and try to figure out right where we want it right here. We want this much air flowing through the idle air control valve. So we're gonna adjust some stuff to try to get it there. All right, so if we look down in here, we have our throttle position sensor. All right, so here's the throttle position sensor. This sensor senses your throttle position, just like the name says. So when you press on the gas pedal, it moves the throttle plate and this sensor moves with it, lets the engine and the computer know, oh, look, the throttle plate's fully open. Put more air into the engine, adjust the fuel. Oh, it's fully closed. We don't need as much fuel. So that's how this thing works. It's expressed in voltage um, when you're looking at the computer and these things can go bad, cause a ton of problems. All right, so here's the sensor right here. Basically just tells the computer um, how open or closed the throttle plate is. So it's just got that inside piece right there that moves around. Um, and this thing right here, it's just like a variable resistor, kind of like a rheostat. It just reads out a voltage to the computer to let you know where the gas pedal is. This is the sensor that tells the computer where is the gas pedal. I get a Delphi one and I just swap it out. This is one of the most important sensors on this engine. So here's our throttle position sensor right here. You can see it's expressed in volts. This is very sensitive. This tells the computer what the throttle position is. So if I just barely touch the gas pedal, you can see it moving. I mean, barely touch it, it moves. And then we can see underneath it, we have the TP sensor to load. See it's open 1%. I can't even get it to 2%. You see how sensitive it is. That'll tell the computer where the gas pedal is. So between the two trucks, they're the same, except for right up in here. Um, the throttle body is different on this one versus the 06, because the 06 is a drive-by wire. See the electronic mechanism right down in here? Right here, it's a motor, electric motor. And uh, the gas pedal is actually just a big switch, you know, computer, press on that switch and then it electronically comes to here. It doesn't really have an idle air control valve or a throttle position sensor. They're all built into this unit. And this unit, it's got a motor in here. It's more complicated because it's newer. You know, they changed it to this in like 03. Uh, the computer can adjust more on this, but unfortunately it's all built into the throttle body. You know, you kind of just replace the whole thing when these go bad, unfortunately, but you can clean the carbon out of them and try to get them to work properly again. But on 2002, we actually have a cable in here because this is drive by cable. So it's an actual cable that goes to the throttle pedal. Anyways, some of the stuff on the intake manifold right here, the throttle body is different. All right, so here's the map sensor right here. So this sensor senses the manifold pressure. Um, it senses the pressure inside the intake manifold. Now I don't have many problems with these, but they do get oiled up and gunked up and carboned up because they have this little hole on the end of them. And the intake, the PCV valve, you know, you get excess oil, get sucked in there. You gotta clean these out every now and then. All right, so here it is right here. You can see this one kinda needs to be replaced because it's got this bad seal on here. But there's the hole I was talking about in the end of it right there that it uses to measure the pressure. And then it's just got a electrical connector right there. There isn't much to it at all. I like the Delphi one. Then we have our MAP sensor right here, manifold pressure sensor. You can see that's reading in kilopascals. You know, it'll sense um, the vacuum and the pressure in the manifold. So, well, the pressure in the manifold. So you can see right there, it's jumping around, you know. Um, they're good. All these sensors are good on this truck, so you can use it to see if yours are bad. 
but the map sensor right here voltage and then the barometric pressure is right off of that obviously it's staying constant not moving because we're not going up or down in altitude which would cause that to change so you can see we press on the gas pedal changes the vacuum inside the intake manifold and moves the reading all right so the sensor goes all the way back up in there you got to take the plastic covers off and it's sitting right back on there on top of the intake manifold you got to get this cover out of the way all right so here's an intake manifold right here and here's where the map sensor goes plugs in just like that it's going to be the same down in there but it just plugs in right there electrical connector plugs in if you think you have a problem with this just swap it out don't even fool with it get a new one pop it out pop it in you'll be good to go if they're bad just swap them out easy all right that's it for the video guys hope it helps someone out make sure to drop me a huge thumbs up down below don't forget to subscribe for more chevy tips in the future i got plenty more where this came from Later.